Hello, hello, fellow ghouls and goblins, and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be doing the game Night of the Dead, which describes itself as a zombie survival base building style game in an open world, or at least that's what the tags say on Steam. The game also has a 79% positive rating on Steam, and at a first glance, even though it's in early access, it looks like a pretty decently made game by the developers from Jack 2 Studios, which seems to be a small development team of two people from South Korea, according to both their early access notes and a article from the Unreal Engine. The size and scope of the game is very large, especially for a small development team this size, and from unconfirmed sources, it says that they have been working on the game for at least two years before they released it onto Steam in early access in 2020. The game seems to have been received quite well, but to me it's actually baffling because the game is kind of a hot pile of garbage for the moment. From what we can assume, the game is now in its sixth year of development or at the very least, it's fourth year, which means I've had plenty of time to work on most of the basic aspects of the game, and yet, not even 30 seconds into playing the game, it starts to show its glaring cracks, things that, after the initial release, or even before, should have been addressed post-haste for the game to keep its credibility. But even now, those issues are still in the game, and yet the fact that no one's brought this to the public's attention is quite alarming. However, perhaps we should go through everything step by step to give you more insight into both the game and the minds of the developers behind it, or at least or what I can assume is their mindset. Upon starting the game after creating your character, your first look at the game itself is waking up into a mysterious underground bunker where the tutorial starts. The game prompts you to interact with the radio, but even before all that and simply just looking around the room, you realize something's not quite right. But off you go, collecting the radio, you are introduced to the game's main storyteller, that of Veronica, who will be talking in your ear throughout the entire game and tells you what to do from now on with almost every story mission available. You're told to go through the bunker looking for something called the mutant substance in order to help Veronica create a cure for the zombie virus, but before you can, you suddenly realize why everything looked so strange before. Because standing right before you is a 12 foot door, which doesn't make much bloody sense. A door should not be 12 foot tall, but in this game, it is. And like I said, this is where the cracks in the game's armor start to begin to take shape. Proceeding with the objectives in the bunker, you were introduced to a survivor a little later on by the name of Walter Wagner. And yes, you heard that right. His voice doesn't sound real, which makes me suspect that it's AI generated, though that's not entirely a bad thing. Since the developers are Korean, and so far the game has been all in English, it's safe to assume that these are temporary places holders, or at least that's what I hope, because some of the voices have no personality or depth to them, it makes me suspect that they are AI and just placeholders at the very least. So the bunker is pretty small in size and seems to only serve to teach you the main controls and basic story of the game, or what you'll be doing from now on, so as to introduce you to the world. But it's also your first look at the game, which is very important because it sets the tone for the rest of it and shows you a little bit of insight into developers behind it, which will be important later on. Upon leaving the bunker, you are introduced to the outside world, and while everything looks normal for now, it won't be long before you start to question everything. But even before that, you are introduced to one of the worst elements in the game as a whole, which are that of radio audio triggers. Now these are quite similar to the game Days Gone, which came out before Night of the Dead, and... It's another survival zombie game which is heavily story based and uses these radio triggers to progress the story. Though Night of the Dead has hundreds of audio triggers, unlike Days Gone, for the radio, which for most of the game means you're going to be hearing nothing but the radio and no one asks for this, it's incredibly annoying and poorly executed. I just wish it didn't exist, especially because half the radio triggers are to point you towards these vital resources which practically forces you to go 
out and get them more or less and that just ruins the exploration side of things rather than exploring places yourself but i think it could be executed better take for example a rumor board similar to the witcher series where you've got quest board there's a new type of crafting table which when accessed is like a map and you can click on postings about rumors such as these vital resources saying such things like i heard there's a book of weapon crafting in either the fire station or the police station prompting you to search more than one area rather than telling you exactly where it is because this isn't forcing your hand to then just go search that one thing and taking exploration out of the equation it would also cut down on the amount of noisy radio chatter since that many audio triggers do not need to exist because at some point they're just talking over each other and it is very annoying. I hope that they remove that element of the game as much as they can. Proceeding out into the world, you start to come across more peculiar things similar to the 12 foot door we explained before. But the first one you're bound to notice is the seven foot barrel in the middle of the road, which seems a little odd. So perhaps we should start to talk about this. The creation of game assets is one of the skills that I happen to be learning, and there are many aspects that result in just knowing common sense, such as the scaling of assets, which will be our main theme going forwards. In order to create a game world, you first need to populate it with assets, so that the player can interact with the environment. And the more realistic you make the environment, the more immersion you can garner from the player. But if you take something as simple as the scale of a few objects, especially those objects that exist in the real world and change them then the player is going to notice this and experience something we like to call an immersion break but if you're asking yourself what is immersion well put it simply it's the act of getting deeply involved in something mentally and that can happen with many things such as books music tv movies and of course games but why do we notice these things well the human brain is complex but knowing something to be true means that when it's not it's easier for our brains to notice so going back to the scale of game assets, the ones in Night of the Dead are not correct. And at first glance, you only notice a few of them, such as the door and the barrel, because they have been overscaled or underscaled more than 50% of what they should be. But the more you play, the more you realize that some things are as low as 10% larger or smaller than normal. And it's not just a few objects. It's a lot. So, how did this happen? Well, not easily. That's half. Because it's actually quite hard to fuck this up. Because while you're actively making the assets in question, especially if it's a real world object, you're making it to the scale of said real world object, which means you should already have the rough, if not the accurate dimensions of that object. Well, let's take, for example, the barrel in question. If we assume that my character is the average female height of five foot four, then the barrel in question is around that height at the very least, but googling the dimensions of a 55 gallon barrel, it only comes to around half that height. So it should have been made with those dimensions in mind. So it doesn't make much sense that it's double the dimensions of what it is supposed to be. If it was one or two objects in the game with a small percentage, smaller or larger in scale, you can excuse it as an accident, especially after four to six years of development, but there are so many that it almost feels deliberate, or at the very least, just laziness on the part of the developers. But as only if they made the assets themselves. There are thousands of assets on the Unreal Marketplace from hundreds of people, and I also plan on releasing my assets there one day. But if the developers had bought and used Marketplace assets, they would have been painstakingly checked to make sure the scaling was correct by the creator. Otherwise, it would have been reported on by people buying those assets. So if the developers used Marketplace assets, they would have had to deliberately upscale or downscale them to make this mistake. And this is one of the biggest problems with this game, to think that it hasn't been corrected in the past four to six years is kind of a joke, because it's a very amateur mistake to make, especially since this kind of thing could be fixed in as little as a few days' work. Though it seems the developers don't care because they've neglected these 
these things all this time, and they're only focused on adding new content to the game. And I understand throughout all this, the game is in early access, but there is another game similar to Night of the Dead that's been in early access for the past 10 years now, which is just coming out of early access. And in every update they've ever made, they've always made sure that everything works as best as it can. And they've never made these kind of amateur mistakes. Sure, they have a few extra people working on the project, but like I mentioned, these are amateur mistakes and you can't make them a thousand times over without realizing. Putting aside the asset problem, the annoying radio, and the game's story, because it's not so important right now, there's another aspect of the game that needs to be investigated, which is that of the combat system. Now, throughout the entirety of this video so far, I am playing the game in normal mode, and I will continue to play on that mode because it's impossible to play on any other. You would assume that it's a fairly easy mode to play on because it should go easy, normal, hard, right? Well, this game has seven difficulty modes and normal's the third. It comes after peaceful and easy, so logically it would be an okay mode to start on and have fun with. But the way that the combat mechanics are poorly implemented makes the game 50 times harder than it actually needs to be, and normal mode feels like ultra hard at times because of this. You would assume the reason it's so hard is a simple balancing issue, and while you are correct, at the same time you are also kind of wrong, because it's not such a simple fix. The way that the combat system works is almost a joke, because even taking a 1v1 melee fight against a normal zombie, you think it'd be an easy fight that would only take a couple of hits to kill said zombie, but it doesn't end up being that way, and sure there's the leveling and the skill trees and things, but even then, killing a zombie with a high level weapon in a zone that should be easy to kill said zombie doesn't seem to work out as well as you'd think. You see, sometimes you'll get stunned for almost no reason, and attacks that hit you in ways that shouldn't, or attack you in a place that you're not even in, but you still get hit, which is even more weird, but even your attacks against them seem to do almost nothing, and you just struggle throughout the entire fight, even with a single zombie. You see, in some instances, the zombies can lunge at you and you hit them, which you would assume would stun them because you bashed their head in, but it doesn't seem to do much. Now, all this would prompt you to just move into ranged combat, but it's honestly a mixed bag. The ranged combat is not as good as it should be, and I can say for one thing that the zombies are too fast, because even using a bow and arrow at long range of a couple hundred meters, as soon as you hit them, they sprint at you at full speed, and you can only get two or three hits in before they're on top of you, hitting you, which will stun you, so you won't be able to actually shoot the arrow anymore, so that would prompt you to go back into melee combat, but if you try, you'll have to spam the key to do so many times before it even bothers to try and switch the weapon, which is a problem. Though, guns aren't much better. Taking the fact that finding ammo isn't very easy, or making ammo isn't very easy, even though it gives you tons of ammo, it doesn't really much matter because you can barely aim at a zombie before it's on top of you. Perhaps I'm not so good at aiming, but I tend to miss more shots than I hit, and the zombies take so much ammo anyway, it's kind of pointless. Overall, the combat system I feel is a bit of a joke, and the worst part is that zombies will spawn behind you for almost no reason or be alerted through floors of buildings, making it sound like they're right behind you, which makes you paranoid, and when I mean they spawn behind you, I literally mean within five feet. It happened. I saw it actually happen, not just thinking it was happening, which is very annoying, because when you've cleared out an entire building or an entire area and you know there's nothing behind you and there's no way in thing can be behind you, suddenly there is, and you get hit, and it's just a joke. Similar to the game Seven Days to Die, Night of the Dead features a massive horde of zombies that come at you once a day at midnight, forcing you to defend yourself with the rudimentary traps and limited ammo since there's no chance in hell that melee weapons are ever going to do anything in that situation. Unlike in Seven Days to Die, the hordes almost seem pointless in Night of the Dead since they can't destroy non-player structures which makes almost everything about the horde worthless. Since you can trick the game by simply setting up a base in a place that can't be accessed by the AI of said enemies, though I only learned this in the later hordes, since my first horde I said fuck it and simply set up in the top of an apartment building, but the AI of the zombies didn't really know how to get to me, 
Though I think that was because of the wooden spikes they'd placed at the top of the stairs. Instead, they went to the building next to me, and I could start killing them through the wall, which was hilarious. But I soon got bored of that, and this is when I realized melee combat in a horde was a bigger joke, because you would just start to get stunlocked into oblivion and have to retreat. The hordes to me seemed to be simply for showing off traps and base building, and without that, the entire base building system seems pointless. Because you have to build like 20 or 30 bases throughout the entire game and have to keep moving your stuff because there's no proper way to get around the map otherwise because it's a single linear path throughout the entire map which also seems like a problem to me and the base building system needs refinement if you want to keep it the way that it is because simply adding handcrafted ways to get to these areas where zombies can't reach or making the zombies have abilities during hordes like a high jump would improve the aspects of the game to make the hordes better. When making an early access game on Steam, there's a certain unwritten rule about not creating paid for DLC until the game is released from early access, but it seems the developers of Night of the Dead didn't get this memo. Since they have several paid for DLC ranging from 17% to as much as 85% of the game's original cost for a something as little as a cosmetic outfit pack, which definitely shows the simple cash grab on the part of the developers, and it's going to be pretty hard to convince me otherwise and Frankly, although I'm not a developer, it's a bit of a disgrace to have this. Going into Steam updates for the game, it's clear to see the game has a lot of updates, content and work put into it, especially for multiplayer, and I can't say it hasn't. For only two people to get this far is quite amazing, and it's had so many improvements since the release of the game, and they seem to have always kept a surprise of those developments, even adding in roadmaps on what they plan to do, which is good for building community around the game and keeping it going. But everything I seem to have said so far is negative, though I would say it's more constructive. Despite how I've said so many negative things about the game, it still has a lot of positives, and mostly only the execution of certain elements has been inadequate, but it doesn't mean that everything about the game is bad. It has a good way of leveling your character and giving you new skills to progress in the world of Night of the Dead, and the only negative really was the execution of how you acquire some of those skills via the collection of vital resources, or in this case, the books that allow you to buy those upgrades. But that just means it's not being well thought out as it should have been because you're overwhelming the player with information. Despite how the loot tables in the game are not as random as they could be, and some of the environments have misplaced objects like a bookshelf being in the middle of the train track. The world seems to be handcrafted, meaning that everything has been placed by the developers and not procedurally generated in any ways as I can see or tell so far. And it just needs some tweaking here and there because other than some glaring issues, the map actually looks quite nice and a lot of thought went into it. But I do recommend that they add in a few extra ways to get around the map, like putting through a tunnel through the mountain between the power plant and the desert cities and such like that so that it's not just a linear path throughout the entire map. The game never lets you progress ahead of the main story even if you're exploring places that come up in the main missions. It will always tell you that you need to progress in the mission before doing that thing which stops you from advancing beyond the story of the game. Now I will admit I didn't finish the story of the game and maybe I will go back and do it at one point but the combat system started to drag on for me and it just became too much. Despite how many negative I have with this game, it still enveloped me to keep playing out of pure interest at a point I had over 20 hours in a few days. And while I never finished the game or the story due to getting so frustrated with the combat system, the game is not bad, but it's also not good. It's in a sort of limbo between good and bad, which is probably why it's so highly rated on Steam. People are overlooking certain aspects of the game, most likely due to it being in early access, which gives a lot of developers the freedom to work on games without the need for hard results. But but that also doesn't give them the right to just neglect things either. The game needs a lot of work, but even knowing how hard it is to make a game, a lot of these issues could be fixed within a couple of weeks, or even bringing in another person to assist in the game's overall quality assurance. Because I believe that's the biggest problem it has. There's been no difference of opinion or criticism to things that have already been created, and I find it sad that the game can't live up to its true potential. Though perhaps the future of the game may live up to the hopes and dreams of the players, its potential realized and executed wonderfully, and that's the main reason I'm making this video. Not to slander any way the developers behind it or to sully their hard work, only to bring to light the things that need to be addressed before the game gets released.
During the filming recording of this video, a development update was released about the game leaving early access on July 5th, 2024. And with the promises of things that have been mentioned in this video overall, which I hope they do fix and is the case, but let's discuss it a little because I have no intention of deleting this video or any of the hard work that's gone into making it because there's still a chance nothing that I've mentioned will actually be fixed, though I hope that's not the case. The development post speaks of adding new content as well as fixes, but let's focus focus on what we've talked about so far. They speak of adding in voice actor recordings, which means that some of the voices up to now most likely have been, as I suspected, AI generated. And they were using them as placeholders until they could contact actors to do the voices for them, which is good. Post also speaks of game balancing and optimization, but doesn't go into detail about what these things will be, only mentioning that they want to provide an update players can be satisfied with, which I hope means fixing the combat system and going back to fix all the amateur scaling issues with the game assets and the like because if not then what's the point of the releasing the game? I don't know for certain what will happen in the next few months but I do hope the game gets the fixes it needs and becomes very successful. Though I also hope the developers are aware of these issues already, I still like them to watch this video in case they've missed something in their work. Though this has not been an extremely deep dive into the game and developers as a whole, it still sheds some insight into the subjects and has been fun to make. I've enjoyed doing it from start to finish, even playing the game. I'm no game journalist, especially since I'm better than them, but I hope you learned something, however small. Thank you so much for watching, and if you've made it this far into the video, then congratulations. You've just watched a British person rant and rave over a video game you purchased and found to be lackluster in many areas under the guise of an informative video, but no, you can't have your time back, though I would like to thank you for wasting it here over anywhere else. Not even 30 seconds into playing the game, it shots, it shots, it fucking shots.